Hello, my name is Oscar and this is the 27th episode of Java Game Development, a series in which I exploit the possibilities of developing your very own game using the lightweight Java game library in a programming language called Java. So for this tutorial I want to expand the things we created in episode 24, which was loading an OBJ model and use that with VBOs. So in episode 24 we use this playlist, which were fine at the time, but I felt like I should explain VBOs too because these are one more flexible than this playlists. You can change them in runtime and you can also um, you have more control about of how you want to give the data to OpenGL, the format and stuff. They are easily optimized, I guess you could say, by graphics cards because um, VBOs are the modern way to do stuff and display lists are old and outdated. That's why we should use VBOs. Now let's get into this code. So this is kind of like a skeleton code. I've laid out all the methods, but I haven't implemented them yet. So I, you'll see I have nice to-do statements here, and that is where we're going to start. Actually, no. This is where we're going to start. I have created two private static int variables called VBO vertex handle and VBO normal handle. Now, if you haven't already watched episode 18, I recommend you do so because this is going to cover VBO stuff, and that's what I cover in OGL episode, yeah, Java game development episode 18 as well. So we have VBO vertex handle and VBO normal handle. These represent two different VBOs, and this is how the format's going to be. So we have all the vertices in one VBO and then all the normals in another VBO. Now understand that might not be the most optimized or the best way to do it, but for, for the purpose of this tutorial it's fine. So let's go into the setup VBOs method. Now, setup VBOs. The first thing we're going to do is call VL, uh, VBO vertex handle, or actually we're just going to call glgen buffers. So we assign a new vertex buffer object to vbo vertex handle, and we do the same to vbo normal handle. Create a new vbo for that too. And then we want to start with the vertex vbo. So we're going to start with all the vertices in the VBO, which is called VBO vertex handle. So what we do is call GL bind buffer. The first parameter is the target, which is GL underscore array underscore buffer. And the second parameter is called the, well, kind of the VBO you're pointing at, which is in this case VBO vertex handle. So we want to bind that so we can then call. Uh, GL buffer data and actually store the data into this VBO. So we also have a variable called M, which is of type model, and this type you might have recognized from episode 24. And this is basically just a data class which represents a lot of vertices and a lot of normals. Here. Yeah, it's probably worth saying that you should watch episode 25 or 24 actually before watching this one as well for the layout of the model class. Now then, back to the setup VBOs method. What we do is say m is null, so the model is null. That way it won't throw a null pointer exception screaming at us and stuff. So we'll do try m is obj loader which is another class I have created in episode 24 I really recommend you watch that if you haven't watched it already and then a load model and the file is going to be new file source forward slash episode underscore 27 forward slash bunny dot obj this is the 3d model we want to load then what we do is catch file not found exception
and if we do happen to have a file not found exception, we print the stack trace. Then we clean up. And then we ex exit the application with a parameter of one. So that means it was an error and that's why we closed the JVM. So second catch is IO exception. Exception, that one. So if it failed to load the file, this is what's going to happen. We say e dot print stack trace clean up and system dot exit one. There we go. Now what we do is create two float buffers and these float buffers will store all our vertices and normals. And the vertices will be uh, three vertices for one triangle, and then another three vertices for one triangle, and the same for the, for the normals. They will correspond to each other, and they're not in the same format as we found them in the OBJ file, but that's something I explained in episode 24. So again, go watch that, if you haven't already. Now, float buffer. Vertices. Float buffer is basically a glorified array. And then I want to use the method reserve data, which I'm going to explain now. But first I'm going to do this. So reserve data m dot faces dot size times thirty six. Now the reserve data method, what does it do? It basically creates a float buffer with nothing in it, but it has a specified amount of data reserved to it, if that makes any sense. So what we do is float buffer data is buffer utils dot create float buffer and then size and we want to of course return the float buffer. Now keep in mind we have to flip the float buffer in order for OpenGL to be able to read the float buffer. Um, so we can't give OpenGL the data as it is now. So now it's unflipped basically. And then we create another float buffer, this time for the normals. And we also call reserve data m.faces.size. And then we also call times 36. Now this is where it's going to get a little tricky, so bear with me here. I'm going to call a for each loop. If you don't know, this is basically just a for loop. But uh, if I do face, face, and then this thingy here, I don't know what the symbol is called m dot faces and then curly braces it says for every face in m dot faces and then we use this face here we want to do vertices dot put as floats and here is our second convenience method m dot vertices dot get int time cast to int face dot vertex dot x minus one. Now that's one hell of a line. Firstly, let's do the convenience method. As floats turns a three dimensional vector. I think this is the, yeah, this is the or dot lwjgl dot util dot vector version of the vector 3f. There's also a java x dot vec math vector, but that's only available on Mac. But I digress here as floats vector 3f v and then what we do we want to turn this into an array of floats three elements there that's all there is to it so what we do is return new floats 
There we go. V dot X, V dot Y, and V dot Z. There. That wasn't difficult, was it? Now, back to the huge ass line here. Vertices dot put as floats m dot vertices dot get type cast to int face dot vertex dot x minus one. Now, let me explain this bit by bit. Firstly, vertices dot put. This puts, in this case, an array of floats inside this float buffer. In this case, a three dimensional array of floats representing the first vertice or vertex of a triangle. Okay? And then we call the as floats method, which, turn this, which turns this vector 3f into a three dimensional array of floats. And then what we do is m dot vertices dot get. So we go into our pool of vertices in the same format that the obj file provides. And then we say typecast to int face dot vertex dot x. And this is the index of the vertex in this pool of vertices. And then we say dot x. And that's not really resembling an x component, but rather the first component or vertex of the triangle. So there are going to be three of these lines. And then we say minus one, and that's because of the nature of Java, which says that the first index of an array is zero and not one. Okay, first line, a few more lines to go. Vertices dot put as floats m dot vertices dot get again typecast to int face dot vertex dot y minus one. Same line, only I use y, and that's for the second vertex in the triangle. Now for the third and final line for the vertices, vertices dot put as floats m dot come on m dot vertices dot get typecast to integer face dot vertex dot z minus one. Beautiful, isn't it? And that's basically everything we need to do for the vertices. Now, the normals. This is actually exactly the same as the vertices, only we use face.normal and m.normals. So, I'm going to try and copy this and not make any mistakes, as I did in episode 24. So, re replace any vertices with normals and any vertex with normal. Go. Normal. I don't want plural. Okay. That looks about right. Okay, so now we have the vertices and the normals stored in the format we want to have OpenGL read it from. Then we call vertices.flip and normals.flip to make the VBOs readable to OpenGL or for OpenGL. And now we can call GL buffer data. Here's what we're going to do. GL underscore array underscore buffer, again the target, the same as GL bind buffer. And then vertices, which is the data that's going to be given to OpenGL. And then gl underscore static underscore draw, which is the, the hint, if you will, you give to OpenGL. So this could be dynamic underscore, I don't know, read or something. And you can look these up in the, open, in the OpenGL specification uh, page for 2.1. Now, looking at this, it's probably better to put gl bind buffer down here instead of up there. There we go. So we do this, and then we call another GL bind buffer, this time for the VBO normal handle, GL underscore array underscore buffer, VBO normal handle, GL buffer, oops, GL buffer data, GL underscore, come on, underscore array underscore buffer, 
normals and gl underscore static underscore draw. Now notice how we haven't actually done any format yet. That's something we're going to do um, when we're actually drawing the things, the VBOs. So we can hold this up off a bit. And then when we're done with this, we can unbind the VBO so we can use vertex arrays, for example, without OpenGL whining at us. There we go. That, in a nutshell, was set up VBOs. Second method. We have the render method. Now, the render method is the cream... No, I don't know the exact saying here. <laughs> Never mind. So the render code is where we are going to render our VBOs. Pretty self-explanatory, right? The first line is, as always, gl underscore color underscore buffer underscore bit bitwise or gl underscore depth underscore buffer underscore bit. If you are using the stencil buffer, then you can also say gl underscore stencil underscore buffer underscore bit. But since I'm not using the stencil buffer, I'm not going to do that. Then cam dot apply model view matrix. Let's reset the matrix. And this is using a utility class I provided in episode, I believe it was 26 I first provided this. And you can find this in the utility package because some people apparently didn't find it in the utility package or they weren't able to find it. And what apply model view matrix does is basically the same as GL load identity and then the GL rotate F and the GL translate F stuff. So it puts the camera where it needs to be, basically. Now then, GL use program, shader program. This is episode 26, so I'm not going to explain this here and now. GL light, GL light zero, GL position, cam dot get x, cam dot get y, and cam dot get z. Again, this is episode 26, but I guess I can explain this. Cam dot get x, cam dot get y, and cam dot get z specify the position of the light. So the light is at the same position as you are. And there should be a 1 here. Oh, and I should be using the as float buffer method. Okay. Now, GL uniform 1F, diffuse location. 1.0. This, again, episode 26, sets the diffuse uniform we have in our shaders to 1. Basically, making it the default. Then, gl bind buffer, gl underscore array underscore buffer. Here's where it starts to get interesting PBO vertex handle. And GL vertex, wait, what's wrong about this? Oh, GL vertex pointer. The first parameter is the size, the amount of components, which in these, in this case is three. We don't have a W component, nor, but we do have a Z component. Okay. And then the second parameter is the type, which is GL underscore float. The third parameter is the stride, which is zero. This is for if you want to use interleave VBOs, which I'll probably cover in a future tutorial. And then the last one is the offset, which is going to be zero. Second one, gl bind buffer, gl underscore array underscore buffer, VBO normal, normal? I don't think so, normal handle. And then GL normal pointer. There isn't any size for this one because every normal has three components. 
But what there is, is a type, which is gl underscore float, a stride, which is still zero, and an offset, which is also zero. If you wanted, you could put both the vertices and the normals into one single VBO, which I guess would be more efficient, but I'll leave that up to you using offsets and such. Then, gl enable client state. This method here is deprecated, I, I pronounced it correctly, if you're listening Mr. Horn Drop or something, I did pronounce it as deprecated this time. I digress, back to the thing, gl enable client state, it's deprecated in modern versions of OpenGL, you don't need to call it anymore because VBOs are already the standard way of rendering stuff. gl underscore vertex underscore array. Then another gl enable client state, gl underscore normal underscore array, and then gl color 3f 0 0.4, 0 0.27, and 0 0.17, and this is brown if you're wondering. So we set the color for the entire VBO. Again, this is deprecated. Uh, you could pass this into the shaders with a uniform or an, a uniform or an attribute if you like uh, so this is deprecated in modern versions of OpenGL as well and then gl material f this is cool because we can only do this with vbos with display lists this wouldn't be possible because we can't modify the things we've already created in display lists gl underscore front, gl underscore shininess, and then 10. And there's a little surprise with this one here, which you'll see in a minute. Now, finally, the actual drawing of the stuff. gl draw arrays, gl underscore triangles, which is the render mode. This could also be uh, lines or points or quads or whatever, but again, Quads are deprecated in modern versions of OpenGL. And then, let me see, what's the second parameter? I'm actually not sure. Uh huh. Triangles first. Well, the first is obviously going to be zero. And then count, which stands for the count of, or the amount of vertices and not the amount of triangles. You should keep this in mind. And this is m dot faces dot size times three. Now we have to disable the client state. GL vertex array and of course GL normal array. Then we say GL bind buffer gl underscore array underscore buffer zero and then we say gl use program zero oops now finally the very last thing we have to do is going to the clean up method and adding the vbo destroy code uh, sorry the vbo destroy code so what we do is gl delete buffers like this then we say VBO vertex handle and of course VBO normal handle. Okay. Now I should probably explain why this is multiplied by 36 because I don't recall doing that. I'm sorry. M dot faces dot size. This is the amount of triangles. And then we do this times, oh, bear in mind, this is a float buffer of vertices. So we have the, the size of one is the size of a fourth of a float, one over four. So four would be a float because one float is four bytes. So this is the size in bytes, I believe. Is that true? No, this is absolutely not true. Don't listen to what I've just said. One float is a size of one. M dot phases dot size of so the amount of triangles 
and then in each triangle we have three vertices so times three and then we have three components in each of these vertices so times three again and then then what do we have why is this times 36 hmm I wonder if it works with nine I hope oh it actually does work with nine well that's embarrassing I've just found it never mind okay this is nine and not 36 and you all know why so don't go whine and scream at me in the comments please anyway this was Oscar from the coding universe I strongly recommend you to follow my Twitter to keep up to date with all my newest tutorials and please leave nice comments in the comments section below or questions of course and you can also mail me the coding universe at gmail.com but that's everything for today and I'm at see you in the next tutorial